Boom! What's good, fam? Bam, it's your boy. James R. Davis Sr., man. Y'all see the caption up above, man. Let's talk about it. Based upon my 21 years of experience of working with people, just gonna give my thoughts on this. Let me know what you guys think. Why do you think most Americans run from opportunities versus international people? What do you think? Why do you think most Americans literally run from opportunities <laughs> versus the international markets? You know, I'm, I'm getting the opportunity to experience this again. This is my second time building something global. And I tell you, man, there's several reasons why, but, you know, I, th I just think it's fascinating to watch how Americans, when they, you know, they're the ones that need it the most, you know, people in situations, you know, people inbox me all the time, tell me about their circumstances, tell me about their situations, and yet they don't do anything about it. But <laughs> the moment somebody from the international markets hit me up, they waste absolutely no time getting started, being coachable, having that burning desire, willing to work, and come in here and crush it. So what? why why do Americans don't what? <laughs> I mean, they do. Some of them do. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to talk about my, my, my folks in this country. But, you know, some people do take action. But for the most part, most people don't. And here's why I feel. Uh, in 21 years of experience based upon me working with people, based upon me being an employer, meaning I have employees, have a traditional brick and mortar business, as well as entrepreneurship. And so one of the reasons why I feel most people, most Americans run from opportunities. One is not popular, you know. Americans seem to be a society that just follows the crowd. You know what I'm saying? They follow, they follow trends. They follow what's in, what's in, what's in style. Even though our industry is in, it's in style. It's getting, it's getting a makeover right now <laughs> due to live good, right? It's getting a makeover, but it's not popular, quote unquote, when it comes to trends that people jump on you know what i'm saying so it's, it's not popular right and then when it becomes popular that's when americans jump on you know america you know since i was little i always heard that china was always five ten years ahead of us and being a grown adult seeing the different trends seeing the different culture uh movements uh that's correct it's absolutely right you know, and it's it's crazy. People should literally take advantage of more opportunities in America versus people internationally. And so it don't have to be popular internationally. It just needs to be an opportunity for them. You know, they just take advantage of it. <laughs> you know, if it ain't popular, then most people in America are not gonna not gonna do it. That's one of the things. The second thing is distractions. Distractions. Americans have too many distractions in place. Too many options in place. Too comfortable. Americans have jobs, you know, they kind of sold their, 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 their passion, their gift, sold out for a wage or a salary, and they get comfortable with that. And so internationally though, them people ain't them people ain't comfortable. You ought to get on some of these Zooms and listen to some of these international teams and how their how the economy is versus ours and why they take massive action. And I'm, talking, I'm not talking about two or three of them. They coming in packs. They going out until the whole damn community and the whole communities are coming out. If you don't believe me, just scroll down my timeline. You look, just look and see. That's why I'm showing you guys proof to give you guys inspiration that the vision should be global. The vision, the vision should be global. This little nigga here finna get his ass toe up. Come on, run on up on me. I'm going to knock your ass off. <laughs> Little tough ass nigga. Anyway, what was I saying? 
Um, uh, oh, the economy. You know, these international teams, man. You know, I'll be listening to some of these guys, and I'm just like, man, we really do have it made in America. And so that's a problem, though, when it comes to opportunity, because people in America don't understand it. Opportunities, they don't go away. They don't just pass your ass by. <laughs> they go on to the person that's ready to receive that gift. And so distractions, man, distractions. People internationally, they don't have all the distractions that we have in America. So... You know, their focus isn't challenged by all these other different things. And so that's another reason. Here's another reason why I feel like most Americans run from opportunities. It's not in the form of a job interview. <laughs> it's not, you know, it's voluntary. Somebody put that in the comments. It's voluntary. That's why most Americans don't take advantage of opportunities because it's voluntary. Most Americans are used to being told what to do. You know, go to work, go on lunch, come home, you know, get off work, come, come in when the sun is down and go home when the sun is down, right? You know, we're used to being told what to do. International people, <laughs> they have different circumstances, different situations in their countries, but they ain't gotta be told to go get some money and change their lives. You see what I'm saying? They ain't, they ain't got to be told that. They, they, they do it freely. And it shows. The numbers, the numbers, of, you know, just like the Philippines right now. They're the number one team in the entire company right now. They just came out of nowhere. Why? Because Philippines, they're all about community. They love each other. You know, they, they, they support each other. And it's just a different vibe when they come on board. And it's showing. I mean, the numbers are numbering. <laughs> It is what it is. So, you know, Americans, if it's not a job interview or in the form of a job application, they don't see it. They don't see it. Uh, what else that I've observed that literally runs free people from opportunities? Quote, unquote. Friends and family members <laughs> is another reason. Friends and family People are more concerned about what people think versus changing their generations to come. You know, it, you know, it, again, I, you know, I look at the Asian markets. I look at, the, you know, the, 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 the uh, East African, I mean, the African, the whole African teams, uh, the, a, the, e, the UAE teams. I mean, all over the, all over the world, right? Friends and families are supporting each other. <laughs> America, Americans have a real challenge with just supporting one another. You understand what I'm saying? Friends and family members, you know, their opinions blows me away. You know, I, you know, I ain't never cared about what somebody thought about me when it comes to my goals. Shit, hell no. I don't give a damn about what you think. You ain't paying nobody's bills. When the last time have someone's opinion paid your bill? You know, I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> when was the last time somebody paid your bill? Somebody's opinion of you paid your bills. See, people international, they don't care. They're in a different situation. They're operating from a different space. And that's another thing. People internationally are operating from a different space. Almost you know, from a sense, from a space of desperation. People in America, but here's the thing about people in America that I found, people that are sick and tired of being sick and tired for real, they're the ones that take massive action. For real, sick and tired. Not some, not the sick and tired some of you guys have on social media. So Social media sick and tired is just I, I want I want a like on my, my post. Me saying I'm sick and tired. You know, I want attention to me saying that I'm tired. Y'all ain't really tired. <laughs> Some of y'all ain't really sick and tired of being sick and tired. And so those are just a few things that I've seen based upon my observation, based upon my professionalism. You know, being in this being in this being in this space for 21 years. You know, those are some of the differences. I can name a few others. But those are some of the main ones, you know. 
It's unbelievable. And Americans need it the most. We need it the most. But we don't take action on the information that we that we see. In fact, we ignore it. Most Americans literally run from opportunities like we're some bill collectors or something. <laughs> like, like it's unfreaking believable entrepreneurship that people run from that in the form of network marketing anyway. Multi-level marketing anyway. So uh and we get it. We understand. You know, I, I was one of those guys that played the game too in network marketing. You know, I was the the, the, the auto ship guy, I was the B V C V G V guy. That was me too. So we had to learn. Thank God for Livgood coming along and disrupting the industry. And people are recognizing that, man, this is not traditional MLM. You know, Livgood is not traditional MLM at all. And so we're doing everything untraditional. And so uh, that's just my two cents for the day, folks. You know, I could be wrong. Who knows? But based upon my experience, Americans are not hungrier than people that are international. And, uh, you know, people internationally, they have every reason to be hungry like that. Americans have every reason to be hungry like that, too, because we live in a capitalistic society. But most people aren't capitalists. Most people are consumers in America. Most of you guys are consumers. You're taught to be a consumer. I was taught to be a consumer. I had to discover ownership, right? I had to discover that. I wasn't taught that in school. And so, you know... And most people are just, like Jim Rohn says, they're lazy in learning. Americans are lazy in learning, especially when it comes to entrepreneurship. And for the life of me, I don't get it. I get it, but I don't get it. Like, I, I'm not going to commit my life to a cubicle for, for, for 40 years. I just was not going to do that. <laughs> not James R. Davis Sr. I spent 10 years and 8 months in prison. I wasn't going to spend the next 40 years in a cubicle. You understand what I'm saying? It's the same, same thing. It's incarceration, right? It's incarceration of the mind, though. Thank God I broke out of prison, the mental prison of, of being accepted or just accepting my little $60,000 a year salary I had back then in 2002 when I first got out of prison. Hell, I thought I was rich. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's why I said on my video the other day, the devil can bless you, too. I feel like that job was, was going to be a, was a major distraction for me. It would have got me off my path of entrepreneurship if I would have stayed there. I would still be a manager at Tennessee Title Loans right there on 3rd and Mitchell because of the way I was thinking at that time if I didn't change my mindset. Because I felt like, again, and everybody around me was saying the same thing. Bro, you're making 60 grand a year straight out of prison. You suit up to work every day. You, you pretty much run that damn joker. Like, you got it made, bro. These were my friends. These were my family members. You got it made, bro. And then when I started talking about network marketing, ironically, folk were like, what? Pyramid schemes, bro. You, you smarter than that, bro. <laughs> you going to do a pyramid scheme, bro? <laughs> you going back to jail, bro? I had all kinds of opinions. Damn, this sweat burning my eye. I had all kinds of folk telling me stuff, man. They, what if I would have listened to those people? Think about it. I mean, they meant well. They loved me. They cared. They were just trying to protect me. But what if I would have listened to those people? I would still be on a job right now. Working 80 hours to 100 hours a week. Balling on the weekends only. <laughs> really Sunday only because I worked on Saturdays too. So, man, never listen to the opinions of the people that love you the most. They love you the most, but they respect you the least when it comes to business. They know you. They grew up with you. What the hell are you talking about, Jane? We finna start making six figures, bro. What you talking about? Come on, bro. Come on back over here and make this 30 grand. Make this 50 grand, 60 grand. Shut your ass up. <laughs> the support is not the same internationally versus here in America. And so that's why, you know, I can speak from that standpoint because I know, I know most Americans are just not open. Their windows are not open for an opportunity. Their windows are closed because they were sold a wage or a salary and said, be cool with that. Be cool with that. All right. And again, there's nothing wrong with the job, folks. Hell, that's what we, you know, that's a good place to start. It just ain't a good place to finish. I'm just going to say that. Okay. So, you know, and, and even though I love what I was doing, 
I love my job. Shit, I mean, I'm like, man, I'm a manager. I'm a, <laughs> from the hood. I'd have been in prison. I'm the manager. I run this place. I open the doors and I shut it down. I, I'm taking the thirty, forty thousand dollars to the bank every damn day. Like that was a blessing. I loved it. You know what I'm saying? But I love my freedom more. <laughs> I swear to God, I love my freedom more. I love waking up when I'm done sleeping. I love doing, going where I want to go and, you know, who I go with and where, I, you know, and not have to look in my damn accounts and see how much I got before I do this. Do I got a budget? I got a budget this trip. I got a budget this trip. I got a budget that. No, man. That's not freedom. That's slavery. I'm just saying. So, in my opinion, those are the differences. That's why I feel people run from opportunities, man, because they don't recognize the opportunity. We're not taught to recognize an opportunity. We're taught to go to work. No, we're taught to go to school, get a good education, James, go out and get a good job, James, and retire in 40 years, James. That's what we're taught. We're not taught to see an opportunity before the masses see it and get involved. No, Americans do exactly what I talked about earlier. Once everybody's in, once this becomes popular, then Americans jump on board. By then, it's late. You're too late. You missed the whole wealth gap. You missed the transition of wealth. <laughs> you missed it. Now you're in the consumer seat. You could have been in the pioneer seat, but you're in the consumer seat. And so, you know, yeah, it's just my two cents. That's my opinion. It's based upon my experience. Americans are scared of opportunities. Because it's voluntary. It's, it's, it's voluntary. It's voluntary, man. And that's unfortunate that people don't participate in their own rescue. You have a choice to participate in your own rescue. You can choose to participate in your own freaking rescue. And people literally can't see it. They rather choose to be stuck. You know how many people have told me, James, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Bro, I'm ready to get off this job. Bro, I'm, I'm, I'm just ready. You know how many people have told me that in 21 years? Here in America, thousands of people. Ask me how many of them have actually took action on that. Very few. Very, very few. Probably 2 or 3% of those people. Out of thousands of people. So what do you, know, what did you, where do you guys go? What do you guys do if you don't, if you don't do this? If you don't do this... And the possibilities of 10, 15, 20 grand a month, 100 grand a month, right? Millions of dollars a month, okay? You will never have that opportunity on the job. I know I didn't. I, I know I, I wouldn't go be able to make no six figures in a month working at Tennessee Title Loans. Hell no. It just wasn't possible, right? So for me, I weighed it up. I'm like, do I want to take a chance on freedom? Or do I want to stay here as a slave, being a slave to this wage? These wages that everybody's praising me about. This little 60 grand a year. Came out of prison making more money than most people been out their whole lives. Most of you guys make twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars. I got out of prison making almost 60, right at 60 grand a year. So, again, that's a, that's a blessing, Right? But it's, the, it's a disguised blessing, though. <laughs> it's a disguised blessing. Because, man, you know, it was feeding me. It was taking care of me. I was balling out, right? Moved downtown in Memphis in the high rise. Man, I had more freaking fun that I've ever had in my life. Lord Jesus. Came out of prison, man. The whole vibe was different. Women was just, just different. <laughs> Let me say that. Women were different. And I had a lot of fun, okay? So, and but I didn't get caught up in all that. I didn't get caught up in all that, man. I was chatting, I was coming on somebody's post the other day. This young lady, she fine little young girl. I mean, I can't remember her name, but we were friends. And I used to see her in my building as I was leaving or, or going, there, going in. I used to always see her. I used to always want to say something to her, but I never really just spoke, kept on moving. And then... uh you know, I come in on her, purse, her post the other day, and she was like, you know what? 
You, you know, I see why you were so driven back then. I see why every time I saw you, you was going somewhere. You was like in route, suited up, in route. You ain't had no time for that foolishness. Because listen, guys, I understood the opportunity that I had my hands on. I could have got very distracted with women back in them days and got caught all up and just woohoo. Every Thursday night, karaoke. Every Sunday night, karaoke. I was a damn celebrity down there, for real. Like, <laughs> for real. <laughs> Ask some people that live in Memphis that was hanging out at Wet Willies back then, right? You know, we had a freaking a celebrity singing group back then. <laughs> Shouts out to my boy Devin Crutcher, man. Devin Crutcher. Devin, Devin went on to, to be featured on uh, Puff Daddy's... Uh, uh, what was that? Making the making the band, whatever it was. He ended up going on there and shouts out to Devin. He's still rocking Memphis to this day. Still singing. Still singing. My boy Chris, he out there doing his thing. He's still singing. Out at Arkansas. And so, so we literally had a fan club. Like, <laughs> just coochie just thrown at me. Like, all day, all day. It was just ridiculous. But again, I stayed focused. I stayed focused, man. She said, man, I remember you was on it, bro. Like, you didn't have time for none of the foolishness. At least that's what she thought. But again, my point is this. I didn't get distracted, man. I was on a mission. I was on a free mission, man. You can't sit. You can't show me. I can't come into a room full of people, all these folk up in here, and then 20 folk in the front of the room, all of them executives making a minimum of three, $4,000 a month over 70% of them done walked away from their jobs. And I'm in the room like, what? Y'all doing this shit legally? And you ain't got to worry about one time coming to not kick your door in at night? What? You can't show me nothing like that. I'm from South Memphis, man. You can't show me that. Like, for real, you can't show me the possibilities of 40, 50, 100 grand a month. And I sit there and I just act like I ain't see it. I just go go back to work like I ain't seen all that. Nope, didn't see it. Don't stay here. Sixty grand a year, man. That would have tortured me if I didn't. If I didn't take action, I would be the. Especially now, because guess who I see on on Facebook now? That was in the room back in them days. People like Darnell Self. People like, you know what I'm saying? I see Darnell and his wife now. They multi-millionaires. Melvin and Tracy Larry, multi-millionaires. Bert Calhoun, multi-millionaire. Kevin Mack, multi, all these folk. I'm like, how the hell? And I'm, and it was funny, man. I, you know, like I would go back and talk to my friends about, you know, leave the meeting, go fired up Jack. Be like, bro, <laughs> hey, man, I found it, bro. You might want to come to this meeting. Y'all know the flack I got, right? <laughs> Unfreaking believable how people literally just ran like I've destroyed literally I've destroyed relationships over this industry. I've, I've slapped people in the mouth for, for talking to me saying, man, it must be one of them pyramids. Pow! What bro? what you say? Nigga. Oh, that sounded like one of them scam. Pow! Don't say that shit to me, bro. You know me like that was me. Thank God for personal development. Right? Because <laughs> you could tell me what I was doing was a damn scam. Like, how you going to tell me I'm a scam? I'm trying to send all of us to jail? Really? I'm, I'm, <laughs> I just did 10 years in prison. Get out. Come to you with an idea, with a business opportunity. You telling me it's a scam? Oh, boy. Yeah, I was, I was heated. I got heated from a lot of folks. I cut a lot of people off behind that shit. That language. Like, y'all got me fucked up. And then guess what happened years later? Them same folk, they always congratulate me. They be on my post to this day. Talking about some congratulations, we knew you could do it. Da, da, da. And them folks still in the break room, talking about folk. Broke ass folks still in rich people business. I woke up this morning, all I see on my timeline is Steve Harvey and Margaret Harvey. Some people saying it's true, some people saying it's not. Who the fuck cares? You broke. You all in rich people business. See what I'm talking about? That's, that's Americans. You know, I'm talking about viral. But a hundred grand a month opportunity don't go viral. Why? 
People don't believe it. People are skeptical. <laughs> People is not popular. Right? It is what it is, man. It's not a job. It's not a wage, Jane. It's not predictable. It's not every week, every two weeks. Right? It ain't an hourly wage. It's entrepreneurship. Ain't no limits on what you can make. I done made the most money in my entire life these past 10 years. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't think it was possible, man. I, I have to pinch myself when I wake up in the morning sometimes and just think about, man, I look at my accounts and I just be like, God damn, this shit is nuts. And folk be leaving me on scene when they ask for information and don't do nothing with it. Go to their timeline, they talking about, man, I'm so sick of this damn 95. <laughs> so do y'all know how I feel? You know, you, do you understand the space I come from? Right? Have done it, have achieved it, have reached, have helped other people achieve it. And then people reach out with a need and they don't respond to the need. It, it is, it's, it's comical at this point. 20 years ago, it used to piss me off. Now, that shit is hilarious. It's hilarious. The excuses that Americans have. I just commented on somebody's post this morning. And, and they, they might be watching and I don't, you know, I don't want to rub them the wrong way, but the post was saying something like the keys to success is not a home, not a, not money, not this, not that. It's a relationship with Jesus Christ. I agree. Amen. It is. But Jesus don't want you broke. Jesus don't want you suffering. Jesus don't want you to not prosper. See, a lot of you guys, a lot of you quote-unquote Christians, y'all use scripture to stay broke. Use scripture as a comfort level to stay broke. God don't want none of his children suffering. Y'all need to stop that shit. I heard, I haven't seen preachers preach it. It's okay to suffer, y'all. Be thankful for the sufferings. You're going to suffer your whole damn life financially. That's what you're going to do. And you're going to get your little piece of heaven when you die and go to this streets of gold. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hey, last time I checked, heaven and hell is a state of consciousness. You can literally live in hell right here on earth. You can have heaven right here on earth. Whatever happens to us when we leave here, don't nobody know for a fact I know I, I know I just lost a whole bunch of folk right there. <laughs> we don't know, no. You got to die to even find out. So my point is, though, people literally use suffering right here on earth as an excuse, as a legitimate excuse of not to, not to try. How this working out for y'all, man? And, and I promise you, I promise you. You know, when I look into some of these churches, quote unquote, all I see is a bunch of unhealthy people, overweight people, struggling people. So let me get off of that before I piss somebody off. Y'all know I don't care about pissing nobody off. I'm going to stretch you. I want you to grow. Stop using things as a crutch for you to stay stuck and broke and struggling and fat and overweight and unhealthy. Stop it, guys. Just stop it. So, that's just my opinion, man. That's why people in America versus international people, Americans literally run from opportunities. They're too comfortable. Too fucking comfortable. And the ones that get uncomfortable, those are the ones that I've seen perform in entrepreneurship. When their back is totally up against the wall. They truly sick and tired of being sick and tired. They ain't just talking about being tired. James, I'm tired. Nah. I told y'all the other day, 100% of y'all that tell me that, you don't do nothing. 100%. Maybe a fraction of a percent of you do something about it. You know the ones who do something about it? I don't even hear from them. Like I said yesterday, if I send it out to you, folk take action. 80% of the people are finding me on social media. They ain't inboxing me a whole lot of questions. They just like, hey man, let me get that link, bro. 
boom, they in. Those are the ones that take action. That's in America. The ones that's truly sick and tired of being sick and tired. Not talking about they're sick and tired of being sick and tired, but they're truly sick and tired. And that's the difference. People internationally, they ain't playing. Man, I'm looking at, <laughs> I was looking at my back office, man. I was just like, man, oh man. I, I literally got a few people in my business just sitting there. Sitting there. And you know what's happening for them? They're starting to accumulate people falling underneath, underneath them. They're starting to accumulate income. And they ain't doing any, not, not a damn thing. Blows me away. <laughs> Blows me away. But you know what I love about that? That type of, with this type of compensation plan behavior, it wakes people up. Because I got a few of them that was doing that, wasn't doing nothing. Residuals, $30 a month, $50 a month, and it's jumping to $100 a month. And they're like, whoa. It done went from 30 to 50 to 100. I, ain't, I still ain't did nothing. Oh boy. <laughs> then they mess around and sneak on a call and get the information and be like, holy shit, I'm out of screw. I'm, I'm slipping. Boom, they get ranked up. <laughs> That's the type of behavior that is creating. I had another guy hit me up this morning. Like, boom, hey, bro. I got my first spillover. I'm like, man, congratulations, my brother. But hey, you don't want that. <laughs> you don't want no damn spillover, bro. Wait, what do you mean? Why do you say that? That right there let me know he ain't plugging in and listening. Because if you understood what was going on over here, you, you ain't finna celebrate no damn spillover in your business. That's 25 cents. <laughs> Versus me sponsoring somebody like a Leela or a Van. Right? And they going to work. Now I'm check matching their matrix checks and their entire team's damn matrix checks versus 25 cent. Yeah. Light bulb moment. <laughs> Light bulb moment. You understand what I'm saying? Why would I celebrate 25 cents when I can celebrate tens of thousands of dollars? It don't make no sense to celebrate a damn spillover person. No, you want your people in that spot so you can check match that person that you sponsor and you want them as high as possible in the matrix so that's why when i went live when i, when I went hard in january and i said listen guys you might want to take a spot <laughs> i meant that ask the people how they feeling right now who took spots just ask them go look through my timeline look at all my posts welcomes and congratulations and then look at all the people commenting on there go ask them folk who got started early are they glad that they, that they locked in matter of fact matter of fact i just posted in my group who all <laughs> i just posted in my group hey guys i already know because i'm check matching your checks just in the matrix alone right but how many of you guys businesses are free at this point like it's, it costs you nothing to run your international business People are starting to comment on that. That is huge. That is huge. Do you understand how many people in this industry have a hundred dollar a month auto ships? Hundred fifty dollars, two hundred dollars a month auto ships that they gotta make a damn decision at the end of the month every month. Light bill, auto ship. Light bill, auto ship. We ain't got that problem. <laughs> Woo, we ain't got that problem. So who gonna quit free? Who gonna quit a free business that's generating income? The income is more than the membership. Woo, man. I freaking love it, man. I freaking love it. So the international people are seeing this. And that's why they coming in in packs. Americans, eh, they catching up slowly but surely. You know, we got we got to prove, we got to show and prove to Americans, and we doing that. Six figures a month already been done. It's already been done, folks. Six figures a month in this company already been done on a nine dollar and ninety five cent a month membership. Can you guys believe it? <laughs> Six figures a month. That means one hundred thousand dollars plus 
in one month's time frame has already been accomplished over here. It's already been done. 40 diamonds already. That's about four or five people a month getting in a six-figure position. So what else do we have to prove? Oh, the products. Do the products work, James? Go to the Live Good Testimonials page. Go in the group and look and see. Look at all them thousands of testimonials. Yeah, the products work. I, I saw the prices, man. They cheap. So they got they can't work. They cheap. Okay. Some of y'all don't understand the, the, the difference between value and cheap. Some of y'all don't understand the differences between what's valuable and what's cheap. Some of y'all going to miss this. Some of you guys are going to miss this. And just like the last time, two or three years from now, some of y'all going to be hitting me up. And some of y'all liking the post, right? I'm thinking about one person in particular. I would call her damn name, but I ain't going to put her on the spot. She literally told me, man, I wish I would have joined you in SBC when you first joined. She was one of the first pe persons I reached out to in this company. Said, so, hey, here's your chance. That Negro ain't said nothing back to me at all. That Negro just liked one of my posts yesterday. So, little mama, you know who you are. <laughs> I see you still complaining and working on your job. You got a good job now. And you're complaining about that. So, don't say I didn't tell you. Don't say I ain't reach out to you. All y'all that had asked for more info, I'd hit you up back with the information. You ain't did nothing with it. Some of y'all going to be crying in a few years. Just watch. See, I know what's going on behind the scenes with this country. Stuff I don't even talk about no more. I used to talk about it a lot. But y'all thought I was smoking crack until COVID hit. And then you like, hey, bro, man, you know what? You were right about that shit, bro. Oh, I know it. I ain't trying to be right. I keep telling y'all that. I'm not trying to be right. I'm trying to inform my people. Y'all remember me talking about the monetary system? Y'all remember me talking about getting your money out of banks? Y'all remember me talking about events? This little quote unquote variant is on his way back again to knock some more y'all off. Right? Just wait and see. I called it last time and it's coming again. <laughs> and what's going on with this with this trial and all this stuff with y'all former uh 40, what are the whatever number he is? The orange guy. I'm just gonna say this about that. Since Trump, since that fool ran this country like Suge Knight ran death row, this nigga bro gonna do time like Suge Knight. Like this, this guy is literally running the playbook of Hitler. Literally. Literally. And again, I know some of y'all done, I just, I just set some of y'all off right there. What? You talking about Trump? Oh my God, I can't do business with you, bro. <laughs> I was a Trump fan too at one point. So I started seeing what the fuck he was doing. What he on, what he about. What kind of plays he running. <laughs> folks. Alright. Like I've been saying, get your money up folks. For real, for real. Get your money up. Some of y'all playing. A few years, some of y'all going to be crying. Because you missed the opportunity. To put yourself in a six figure a month position. See, you're going to need to have options folks when shit hit the fan. You're going to need to be able to lead this motherfucker in a heartbeat. And if you ain't got access to that type of stuff, bro, sis, y'all in trouble, man. Keep keep ignoring these opportunities. <laughs> Look, I don't like being a doom and gloom guy, but man, shit. Can you guys believe I had some friends in Ukraine call me when them folks invaded that shit? Yo, how did you know? I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know. I said they were going to create some events, guys. And people don't think that that shit can happen in America. Okay. Keep being distracted. Keep being distracted with the bullshit. Posting about Steve and his wife. All them rich folk business, but y'all broke as hell. 
ain't even a fraction of this man's net worth. But y'all got the, the nerve to post this man's business. And we don't even really know if it's true or not. Amazing how many people are, are praying on this guy's downfall, like joking about it. If it is true, so let them folk do their thing, man. You need to be more worried about your life, getting your ass together. Because what this country doing, man, all I'm going to say is y'all going to see. You're going to see. You're going to see. And if you ain't got the money, you ain't got access, you ain't got options to get up and get the fuck out of this bitch when you need to, oh, you're going to feel it. Trust and believe that shit. And some of y'all going to remember my words. Some of you going to remember the words. And you're going to kick yourself with regret because you ain't got the money to do what you need to do. Money ain't everything. I agree. But it's up there with God and oxygen. That's for sure. Let me check out some of these comments real quick. Finish getting my walk in. See if we got any comments. What's up, Kimberly? How you doing, sis? Sis, we need to talk. We need to sis. We need to talk, Kim. <laughs> I see you doing your thing. But uh, I'm going to say this to all my friends that's in network marketing. All you guys that's in network marketing companies, take a look at Live Good. That's all I'm going to say. Look at Live Good. You ain't got to join. You ain't got to buy nothing. Just go look. I need you to at least know while you're building that other business, you know, them high-ass auto ships and them VVs and PVs and CVs and you got to buy a product to qualify and all these type of shit. You just look at Live Good. Because see, some of you guys are so focused on your business, and I salute you for that, truly. But you guys are missing a whole wave. And you go mess around and lose your people. You are losing your people. We've seen it. They all, some of them ain't my business. People from all, all different types of opportunities. The, the My Econs, the, the, the ML, MWRs, the HBNs, the Gold Designers, all of them. All the folk in our business. They tippy-toeing over here. And y'all still promoting these the highest auto ships. Like, again, I was once, I, I, you know, I did that for 20 years, 18, 19 years. So I know. But if you're in another network marketing company, look at Live Good. Don't join. Just look at it. Take a free tour. I dare you to take a free tour. <laughs> and see, here's what you ain't got to worry about with us. You got to worry about getting terminated. Do you guys know that there are companies out here that legally got some of y'all in the chokehold? You can't post on social media. You can't do nothing. So I'm just saying, I love you guys, man, for real. And I don't want nobody's business to be disrupted because of what we're doing. But I'm telling you right now, as a friend, y'all might, if you're in network marketing, I don't care what you're doing. With health and wellness, credit repair, financial services, education, whatever, crypto, you need to look at live good some of y'all are still asking me why you in live good why you still ain't in in hbn bro bro why you think just think about it why do you think i moved period my people was not eating everybody's eating over here it's different it's different i'm telling you it's different right i posted a reel got a text message just yesterday from somebody like, bro, man, send me your link, bro. These fools over here with the bullshit. Them folks, them folks, <laughs> God, them folks that convinced the team to go join another company that has the same product that they got. One freaking, no, I'm going to leave that alone. I don't need no cis, cease and desist letters in the mail and shit. I'm going to leave that alone. I know some folks get real sensitive. I could be sued for defamation of character and all that old type stuff, even though it's facts. Even though it's facts, right? But I'm just saying, if you're in another network marketing company, you might want to look at Live Good. That's all I'm going to say about that. Do what you want to do. Keep rocking. I literally wish y'all the best in whatever you mark, in whatever you rocking. Because like I always say, I got love for the industry as a whole. I don't care what you're doing. I want you to win. I don't give a damn if your auto ship is $150 a month. And you overcharging your damn people for your tea and your 
weight loss products and all this whole kind of stuff. I, you know, I want you to win. Because, again, there's too many people outside of the industry. They don't understand the value that we have. They don't understand that you can create a hundred damn thousand dollars a month passively and change your whole freaking life. They don't know that. So if you're in network marketing, I'm really rooting for you. I'm saluting you. Because you're doing what most people are not going to do, especially here in America. But if you ain't making money, if your team is not making money, if you're sitting at a rank still, and you've been at that rank a whole year, but you done been to four events, hooping and ha rah and rah rah and, and saluting and woohoo, cheering, broke. Look at Live Good, man. I'm telling you, I know the game that people play. I know the game that's played in network marketing, guy. Y'all can't fool me. I know better. That's why I made a move to put people in a better position. Okay? So again, I wish you guys the best in whatever you're promoting. I really do. That's why I'm on your timelines and I'm commenting and I'm cheering and I'm congratulating you guys. Go, man, go if you're in MLM. But MLM is changing, folks. And guess who's changing it? Live good. Live good. Who wants the, the great disruptor video? I got it. So you can see for yourself. You got to take my word for it. Get that video and watch it and see for yourself. Uh, an eight-figure earner made the video that's in Live Good, and they like and they exposing the industry for what it is. I love this industry, phenomenal industry, best industry in the world, in my opinion. Best industry in the world, in my opinion. But it needs to be fixed, and we're fixing it. It needs some minor adjustments. We're making those minor adjustments. The numbers are speaking for themselves. 40 diamonds in eight months? How many people are ranking up in your company in a week? Ask yourself that. Be honest with yourself. You ain't got to comment on here. Just be honest with yourself if you're in another network marketing company. How many people are ranking up? How many people are making money in your company? How many people are looking at your deal and actually joining your deal? You know what ours is? People that take a free tour, that look at that video and take a free tour, over 50% of those people are joining. That's number one. Over four to 5,000 people a week are ranking up in LiveGood. 25,000 people a week are joining LiveGood. 30% of people that are joining LiveGood, they're making money in LiveGood. They're ranking up in LiveGood. That's unheard of. There's no other company in the industry that's ever done that. Again, that's not just me saying that. So, sometimes, man, success leaves clues. So does failures. And some of you guys are on a sinking ship right now. If you're in a traditional MLM business, you're in a sinking ship. That's not my opinion. That's a fact. So, if I hurt your feelings saying that, say, ouch, get over it, I still love you. Look at Live Good. Take a real serious, hard look at Live Good. Take a free spot. Now, if you don't like what you see, you don't like the emails that's coming through, opt out. Scroll to the bottom of that email, and it says a little opt out. Just unsubscribe and opt out. I'll see it in my back office, in my contact manager. It'll say this, this person has opted out. Guess what? We still friends, boo-boo. <laughs> it just wasn't for you. It wasn't a good fit for you. That's all. But I highly encourage you. If you're in network marketing, look at Live Good. And stop listening to the, what people are saying that's not in Live Good. Because you know what they're saying about Live Good? Number one, they don't get paid on products. That's a lie. Uh, they, they, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Ponzi scheme. That's a lie. What if they're saying? Oh, it ain't going to last. They're going to be out of business in a year. I can't even call that a lie because I don't know. But betting on the house, I bet everything I own that we're going to be here way more than a year from now. I know Ben personally. We have a relationship, an eight-year-long relationship. 
Ben is surrounded by a staff of people now. It's safe to say we ain't going nowhere. So y'all ain't talking about shit. I'm talking about live good going to be out of business in a year. Okay, yeah, right. <laughs> no, you going to be in live good in a year. When all your people go home and you realize, man, I could have, would have, should have. Yeah. What else we hearing? Huh. The products are are white labeled or or second, you know, crappy. Okay. That's your opinion. I already gave you the source. Go to the Live Good Testimonial Group and see what most people are saying about the products. Okay? Every product is not going to make everybody happy. As a matter of fact, I was will. Because even if you don't get results, guess what we got? A 90-day empty bottle money-back guarantee. So you truly, literally have no risk with us. None. None. And it's only $9.95 a month. <laughs> Compared to $130-something a month. That the, the, the text message I got yesterday from that gentleman... Paying over hundred thirty dollars a month, and then they want him to go join another company that's within the company that you know that's been dead for years, but they're bringing it back. But the company he with got the products. They just moving the products over to that. Like, what the fuck are y'all doing? What they doing, bro? And he's like, exactly. Hey, with the bullshit. Give me your link, bro. Like, come on, man. What are y'all doing out here in the network marketing industry? Like you, you, you're literally destroying the industry with that type of stuff, man. Like that's that's some real bullshit. It's 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 already a challenge to build one team. Now you want me to build two teams? <laughs> okay. Yeah, man. All right, whatever. But anyway, let me check out some of the comments and I'm gonna get out of here. Lynn Toy joining. What's good, baby? Good morning, Kimberly. Good morning. I see Keisha watching, Courtney's watching. What's up, what's up, what's up? All right, that's all I got on the comment side. Cool, cool, cool. Hey, man, I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. I'll talk to y'all soon, man. If I made any kind of sense, man, listen. Just just move on the, on the information, man. If you got value from the information, type below, I got value for me. Type below, I got value. I would appreciate that. But I'm just keeping it real with you guys, man. You know, overall, y'all see the caption up above. That's my opinion based upon my experience. People in the United States versus internationally, they just lazy, man. People in the U.S. is lazy. They don't see opportunity. They miss opportunity. You know, they it ain't popular. You know, they listen to the opinions of other people. You know, all this old stuff. It keeps them just just clouded. And then, you know, the international teams, man, they coming in in packs, in droves. They supporting one another. Whole damn family getting in, getting involved in the damn business. Like, I ain't never seen that. I ain't never seen that. I've seen it maybe once, maybe two or three families, but family after family after family after family? Like, Really? Because people are literally proud to promote this business without all the high ass auto ships. You know understand what I'm saying? They ain't paying a hundred and some dollars a month. You know, people are comfortable with going to their friends and family members, sharing this product with people, knowing they only gonna pay about 18 bucks or eight bucks for some products or 27 bucks for some products. Like, come on, man. It's crazy. So Kamisha says she got value. Kimberly says she got value. Kim, you still hanging around? I thought I ran you off with that little conversation. No, but seriously though. Keep rocking. Keep rocking, sis, but look at Live Good, for real. Courtney, I got value. You always deliver. Courtney, I had to curse her out yesterday because she bullshit. Yeah, I put you on the spot, Courtney. I did. She, you know, I'm just a person that want to stretch you, man. I want to see you guys do well. I met Courtney, finally met Courtney in Florida. We got a chance to hang out in Florida. So she know me. She know I ain't with the bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like, how are you not ranked up in this company and you've been in the company for months? What the fuck are you doing? You on Facebook all day, every day, posting bullshit, but you ain't even building over your business? Yeah, okay. You're going to be one of the ones crying too. Because <laughs> you're going to be sitting on $2,000 a month when you could have been sitting on twenty grand a month. What the fuck y'all doing? Anyway, some of y'all got these jobs and you're too comfortable. You're too comfortable. You know, you know what I'm saying? You're too comfortable. You ain't hurting bad enough. And that's why some of y'all ain't moving. And it's okay. I'm okay with that. But I'm just saying, I'm one of them coaches that's going to tell you what you need to hear. I ain't going to tell you what you want to hear. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He said, you did. Thank you. So, I mean, I'm just saying, that's just how I am. I, I, I say these things to you guys because I, I truly love you. 
it gets on my fucking nerves when y'all call me talking about some man. I'm just I'm tired, Jay. I'm just sick and tired. I can't, I can't do this no more. I get sick of hearing that shit. And then y'all don't do nothing. It's like, I'm just going to stop answering my damn phone. Like, leave a message. Hell, I don't want to hear that shit. Like, just saying, man. Just saying. So, have I said enough for today? People in America, y'all need to be a little bit more hungrier before it's too late. I'm telling you, you're going to need to be in a situation where you're going to be able to have to get the fuck out of here. Don't say I didn't warn you. If you're not financially strapped like that, if you ain't got a chopper, I ain't talking about no AK-47 chopper. I'm talking about a chopper, a helicopter chopper or a jet or something that you can just run, get on real quick. Boom, you out of here. You better stop acting like you balling on Facebook for shit sneak up on your ass. Then you'll be one. James R. Davis, he tried to tell you, man, because I love you. I'll be back to talk to y'all later.